we are back again. And now we want to show how the story of Jesus' portrait was brought from Byzantium and the Near East to further north. Christianity in Armenia and Georgia is very old. Very early on, Armenians and Georgians became acquainted with the story of the portrait of Jesus. They translated it into their own languages and, as is always the case with cultural transfers, the story was reworked according to their own cultural understanding. Thus, in an early Armenian translation of the 5th century, the story is related in a form similar to that of the original Syriac text. Jesus was portrayed by King Abgas' messenger in Jerusalem. Jesus' portrait is not a mandelion. It is still a miraculous, it's not an imprint on cloth. It is still an icon on wood. It is interesting that the Armenian version attests to certain cultural reworking. Abga, the Syrian king of Edessa, is now presented as a king of Armenia. On the other hand, the version of Keramion, the copy of the image on a brick, and the version of the Mandilion are also recorded in Armenian literature. Here again, the Armenian versions assume a national reworking. For example, the cloth with which Jesus wiped his face becomes now the personal napkin of King Abgar. That's the text itself. John came and saw Jesus and tried to capture his beauty on Abgar's napkin. But he was unable because Jesus' face was transformed to glory and rejoiced. And so Jesus asked John for the napkin of Abgar, put it over his face and impressed his features upon it. And then he returned it to the painter. The image was brought to Abgar and it worked many great miracles. Jesus' portrait was also known in Georgia, again with variations. Let us now turn to the National Manuscript Center in Tbilisi, the capital of Georgia. A precious manuscript is kept there, the so-called Gospel of Alaverdi. The manuscript was written and richly decorated in the middle of the 11th century. It contains the four Gospels. At the end, it tells the story of Abgar and how his messenger painted the portrait of Jesus in Jerusalem. A very special feature of this manuscript is that the story is illustrated in five images. Let's open it and have a look. The first illustration shows King Abgar on his bed, writing to Jesus and asking to visit him in his city. And the next illustration shows Abgar's painter kneeling before Jesus, requesting a painting of his face. The text written in the old Georgian script tells us what we already know, that the painter couldn't paint Jesus. So Jesus took a cloth and wiped his face, leaving his features on the mandelion. The next picture shows Jesus in Jerusalem, receiving Abgar's letter. Here we have an image with, which shows the mandelion. It is a rectangular cloth with Jesus' face on it. The Georgian text says, that the Abgar was healed by the Mandilion after he had touched it. Then Abgar ordered the destruction of the statues of idols in Edessa and their replacement by the portrait of Jesus. 
How does the story go on in our manuscript? Very interestingly, the text repeats the story of the Karamion, the portrait on a brick, as we have heard it before. According to Georgian tradition, this copy of Jesus' image on a brick was brought from Syria to Georgia. Let's now go into the center of the capital of Georgia, Tbilisi. We will visit a very old church built in the 5th century. It is called Anchishati Church. The name of church means Church of the Anchi Icon. It is so named because it kept the Keramion Icon, which was brought to Tbilisi from the village of Anchi in southern Georgia in 1660. On the occasion of its transfer from Anchi to Tbilisi, a religious chant was composed, the chant of the Anchi icon. <laughs> Jesus' portrait as Mandilion or Geramion is very important in Georgian art. You can find it, it on frescoes in Georgian churches. Above the entry of the church, we see a fresco with the Keramion type of Jesus' portrait. The Anchi icon is very precious. Today, it is no longer kept in the church, but we can see it in the Georgian National Museum. Let's go there. Here is the Anchi icon. A famous Georgian goldsmith made it in 1180 and integrated it into a triptych. On the frame, you see an inscription in old Georgian script. It recalls how the icon was brought from Edessa to Constantinople and how it finally arrived in Georgia and was kept in the Anchis Chati Church in Tbilisi. Some traditions even go on to claim that the Keramion, the copy of Jesus' portrait, was brought to the monastery of Martkopi. The Martkopi monastery is in eastern Georgia. It was founded in the 6th century by a Syrian monk. The monk is supposed to have brought the portrait from Syria to this monastery. Here you see his tomb. Above, a modern Georgian icon shows him with Jesus' portrait. However, the supposed original <coughs> Keramion is considered to have been lost since the Mongol invasions in Georgia. What do we know of the whereabouts of our Syriac story and the so-called holy portrait of Jesus. Little is known. The Crusaders came into contact with the story when they occupied Edessa and Constantinople in the 12th and 13th centuries. Did they bring the portrait to Western Christianity? Following the siege of Constantinople by the Crusaders in 1204, the portrait and other relics could have been brought to the Latin West. But its traces are lost. Latin writers took up the ancient story from Syria. They adapted it and merged it with local Western traditions. One prominent conflation of the original motif with Western legend is the Whale of Veronica. This legend also tells the story of a wondrous imprint of Jesus' face on a cloth. Jesus left his features on Veronica's Whale as he walked his way to Golgotha. However, like the Syriac painter Hanan of King Abgar, Veronica is not a historical person. Her name is a fusion of the Latin words 
Vera Icona, the true image. Her story is a strictly different tradition of Western Christianity, which goes beyond the scope of our topic. We hope you have learned something new and surprising about old Syriac legend from the Christian Near East that has often fascinated people. The physical appearance of Jesus Christ. As you have seen, this idea has acquired a great dimension over the centuries and it has traveled from the various countries in the Near East and the Caucasus to medieval Europe. The next video will be about an entirely different phenomena, yet one which also transcends geographical boundaries. The craft of alchemy. <laughs>